Lexington, August 2nd uh, meeting, 2021. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by myself, One Verse of America by past President Dan Olson, Invocation, past President Dawn, Welcome Song by Press President Michelle. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My country is of the sweet land of.
Lexington to meet with us today. Yes. We welcome you to Lexington to meet yeah, right. with us today. Our door is always open to our friends at Rotary. We're glad to have you with us and we hope you'll come again to you know, because I've learned that when you can't see this, the gestures that we normally make that babies learn through, and then you kind of lose, as you get more serious, you lose the gestures that we can teach better with gestures, we can understand better with gestures, especially, Frank, when I can't see your mouth. So in the future, would you move a little for me if you're wearing a mask? <laughs> so uh, what I'm contributing is 25 cents. Here we go. 25 cents. <laughs>
Also, an email went out as far as the Rotary um, Celebration of Heroes. Um, we would like to uh, don't want to recognize people in the our community as far as being heroes, especially this past year with the COVID. Um, district governors going to speak a little bit more on that in depth, but uh, something we should think about. Uh, email to go out to people so we can coordinate that with the board and myself for uh, suggestions and uh, nominations. For that. Anything else from the membership? raffle items. Items are donated by Lexington Rotary Club, past president Spencer, and Bill Cassell. Orange tickets, that's orange tickets. <laughs> Not to be confused with any other color, especially by me. All right. 943. speakers program. Also, we're um, honored to have our uh, district governor-elect, Alexander Falk, in our presence also, too. And uh, our governor, uh, Terry Curran, is here to speak to us. Uh, Terry during, during Rotary in uh, 2007. She's been a past president multiple times, uh, 2011 to 2013, 2014 to 2015, and 2016 to 2000. I'm not complaining. <laughs> five district uh, grants uh, for Rotary. Uh, she's a foundation chair, a uh, membership chair, image chair, membership chair, webmaster, and she has received multiple Paul Harris fellows. Uh, she's traveled extensively um, in support of Rotoplast uh, throughout the, uh, the world of Rotoplast. So no further, no further ado, uh, district governor, Terry Cobb. of Rotary. And first, I would like to acknowledge your past president, Spencer, and the team that worked with him because he kept your club active through this past pandemic year. This was not an easy task, and it appears your club has come out stronger having gone through it. I attended the board meeting earlier and, you know, heard that you still had a scholarship program here. You gave out 12 scholarships. That's wonderful. Lots of clubs either didn't have money or didn't raise money to be able to give them out, but it's obviously something you felt was important enough that your club still did this. And I popped in throughout the year on, on a couple of your meetings and saw that they were always lively. Uh, on one, you were installing a new member, and your club has come through this up membership, and that's a good thing. Uh, unfortunately, the Saugus Club has not come through it. Their president was Kang Yu, who was a former assistant governor in the district, very well known around, and he passed away in December. And that club never got themselves acclimated to Zoom, never got themselves back on their, fit, their feet and asked to have their charter, turn in their charter. So the Saugus Club is no longer after very close to 100 years. And so, you know, the, yeah, it's, it's very sad. So that you came through this is a testament to your leadership, your board last year, and Cleve stepping forward, and all of you working together to make things work in your club. The new RI president, uh, Shaker Mehta, uh, is from India. And so he has given us a lot of 
um, phrases and things to think about and has inspired us in all kinds of ways. Even when we are only meeting him on Zoom, usually we meet him in person, but because of the pandemic we weren't able to. And so he often starts with a Hindi phrase, me who na. And that means, don't worry, I am there for you. This embodies his mindset. For me, it's the way that I would like to manage the district this year. So myself, my aide, if you've ever come to anything in the district, the registrar has been Tom Hankard, big guy. He is my governor's aide, and he's always there. You just send him an email and he'll get back to you. The governor track, we're all here for you to help you in this club, all of our clubs succeed. Shaker has chosen the theme of serve to change lives. When he sees suffering in the world, he has an unrelenting zeal to eliminate its cause. He dreams about a smiling world, and when he wakes up, he works to make it happen. In India, he is called a change maker, who aims to inspire an entire generation to serve to change lives. His guiding mantra is, and I, I was, when I was sitting, I heard someone else talking about someone's mantra, is service is the rent I pay for the space I occupy on this earth, and I want to be a good tenant. He urges us to be involved in service projects, saying that caring for and serving others is the best way to live because it changes not only other people's lives, but also our own life. Rotary kindled the spark within him to look beyond himself and embrace humanity. And <clears throat> this is such a true statement. I, as uh, was noted, I went on the Rotoplast mission to Cebu in the Philippines. And when I went, Don Martini from this club went with me. And uh, I was recommended by Bob Wood, the former governor. He was a friend of mine, and I was his aide. And he said, why don't you go on the mission? And I said, I don't have any skills. I'm <laughs> not a nurse. I really don't like blood or needles. What do you think that I, where would you put me? And he said, well, you know, the intake person, they just, you know, work on Excel. I said, I don't understand Excel. He <laughs> said, so, okay. He said, um, well, you know, there's an intake room where the kids are before they go into surgery, and you just play with them. I said, I really am not crazy about small children. <laughs> he said, okay, um, you know, there's, there's the ward coordinator. They're up on in the ward. I go, on the roof in the sweating hut? He goes, it's sunny. I go, sunny is on the beach to me. Next position? And he said, I did transport. I said, you pushed a wheelchair with a parent and a kid in it down a ramp to get into the elevator and then you pushed them back up the ramp? Do you think, do you think that I push around wheelchairs? He said, all right, I have the best position for you. You're going to be in the recovery room. I said, are you sure there's no needles and blood there? And he said, absolutely not. I said, fine. So I went into the recovery room and I was working with two nurses one in her 40s and one in her 60s. And the first baby came out of surgery, and they lay them down on a bed, and they said, sit next so that the baby doesn't roll off the bed. I said, fine. So I just sat there. So then the baby woke up and started crying because they were coming out of anesthesia. And they said, well, do something. I said, me? <laughs> they said, we don't have children. Don't you have children? And I said, well, yeah, I've had children, so I did what all mothers do. I picked up the baby, turned it upside down, and started swaying, and of course, the baby stopped any kind of noise. And they said, you're the baby whisperer, that's why you're here. <laughs> I said, fine. So there was a chart up on the wall, and I said, what are you doing with the chart? It doesn't look like you're using it at all. And they said, well, we just, you know, it lets us know how many patients we're going to have each day. And I said, well, you could mark off their last name when they come into the surgical suite. And then when they come in here to us, we could mark off the first name. And then when they left, we could, you know, draw a line across the rest of the way so that we would, you know, keep track. And we would say, oh, only six more to go, only two more to go, whatever. And so they said, okay, you will be in charge of that. And I said, fine. <laughs> the head nurse, her husband was the head pediatrician, and he came down. And when he walked in, I just happened to be marking it off. And so he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm marking the chart. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm marking the chart. 
So he looked at his wife and he said, and he said, is she for real? And they said, oh, that's just the beginning. Watch this. Terry, what are you marking the chart with? What are you marking the chart with? And I said, I'm marking the chart with the yellow marker. What do you think I'm doing? And so then she threw me a pen and she said, catch. And I, she said, you know, you could put a, a check mark at the end of the line, too, with this. I said, with this black Sharpie? And so she said, yes. And so the husband looked at her and said, she's putting me on, right? And they said, no, she talks like this all day long. <laughs> this is the most entertaining thing. And so before you know it, all of the doctors and the anesthesiologists, as they brought the, the patients into the room, they would say, here, will you take this? I say, the chat? And they just go, oh my God, it's real. She really talks like that. <laughs> so besides being the baby whisperer, I was the complete entertainment all of the time. Whether when we went out in the evening and we got on our bus, people just had questions. And they, Terry, could you answer this question? Sure, what is it? And they would find a question that would have to have an answer that would would amuse them the way that I answered it. Did you go to college in Boston? Yes, I went to UMass. Oh, you didn't go to college in Cambridge? Aren't there schools in Cambridge? I'd say, yes, Harvard is in Cambridge. Yeah. And they yeah. would just uh, crack up. So <clears throat> we all can, can when, we have serve, when we do service to others, we all can get something out of it. I went thinking, I don't know what I'm going to get out of this. I just you know, want to help. What I came back with was after seeing the children, um, in the families that needed our help so much. It was just a wonderful, life-changing experience for me. And so when you do service anywhere, whether you do it at home here or whether you do international service or whatever you do, like Shaker says, that service is the core of our values. And it's what changes all of us and makes us better Rotarians. Um, let's see. For this year, um, he also wants us to focus our efforts on empowering girls and ensuring their access to education, resources, services, and opportunities so that future generation of women leaders will have the tools they need to, su to succeed. He asked members to use Rotary's belief that diversity, equity, and inclusion is critical in all we do as a compass to guide this work. So I encourage all the clubs to work on their DEI certification. Um, we started a program last year. I know this club hasn't, uh, didn't do it. And just take a meeting where you don't have a speaker and print it out and discuss the things. And you'll start by checking off five or six of them immediately. Have you changed things to make your club more inclusive? And it will give you ideas on how to make your club more inclusive. Um, six got that certification last year. I would like to get 20 in my year, so Alexander only has to get 20 in his year, and then the whole district will be certified. Um, this is something that not only do we believe in, but we're way ahead of the curve. And um, over the past year, our DEI committee has put in a lot of time. They did several <coughs> presentations, uh, had speakers. They're all available up on the district website. And the first one this coming year is going to be on September 29th, I believe. And it is again going to be a Zoom meeting because we just feel this is a great platform for speakers to come in and people don't have to rush off and get to some place and have dinner or not have dinner or whatever. You can just sit by your computer and watch it, have a glass of wine to relax while you're watching it, and it's all good. To be able to do more service... <coughs> Rotary needs to increase its membership. And we say this every year because for the past two decades, Rotary's membership has been sitting at 1.2 million. So Shaker has challenged the incoming governors to be catalysts in our districts to help increase membership to 1.3 million by the end of our year. His initiative is called Each One, Bring One. Now, this must be a different kind of new Rotary math because... If there's 1.2 million and we add each one brought one, we would have 2.4 million. But he would just like us to come up 1.3, so I think he's taking into account a little attrition, a little, this is his net number. 
But the point of it is that, that membership, especially in North America, is declining, and membership is increasing in the Far East and Africa. And so if we don't want the scales not tipped in our favor um, for getting priority on things and for grants coming through, then we need to increase membership in the U.S. in all of North America. Um, and speaking of, of grants, the Rotary Foundation last year gave $30 million to the districts in grant money. So when we put in for global grants, that's all matched. Last year, and it has always been at 100%. Now it's dropped down to 80% of the funds that come out of our DDF, that's the district designated funds. And um, <clears throat> they expended all of the money in the World Fund by June 1st this past year. And it did not open up for grants again until July 15th. So usually on July 1st, everything just rolls over. There's money left over. But this year, because so many people are in need, and so many Rotary districts did grants that they just expended all that money. In this district, we did two global grants that brought money into our district. So first we took advantage of a $25,000 grant that had no matching capabilities, meaning the district didn't have to match that money. We just got it direct from Rotary, and it was used for PPE. Uh, the clubs were contacted, those who wanted to participate did and about 16 clubs participated. They split up the pie, they spent it on PPE for their first responders, and that process through. The second grant came in at $95,000, and we worked with a sponsor in Japan who co-wrote the grant with us. So when they put DDF into it, it matched it. The Rotary Foundation matched it. When we threw in 10,000 in DDF, it matched it. When other clubs threw in DDF that had it, it matched it, and when our local clubs supported it, it brought it up to a total of $94,000. This went to two um, specific agencies. It went to St. Francis House in Boston, which is the largest homeless shelter in the area, and it also went up to Care Dimensions, which is the largest palliative and hospice care um, up on the North Shore. So these two businesses, are these two <coughs> I like to call them businesses because that's agencies. Agencies, good word. I'll write that one down. Um, took took advantage of this grant. Most of that is expended out. Um, we just had to wait until July one turned over into the new physical year, and St. Francis House will be finishing up their portion of it. Care Dimensions already has, and then we will be um, turning that over. Coming into the the district this year, um, the Ipswich Club is working on another grant, and it is for the Ipswich River, which has been declared one of the 10 most endangered rivers in the country. And so that starts in Burlington, so that's, I don't know if you have any part of it here, or if you draw off of it for water, no. No. okay? Um, but what we're going to, they're going to do a bid project, a lot of education on it, and we're going to put together a Rotary Day of Service, hoping that the clubs that are along the Ipswich River will all get together on the same day, do some pickup, do some cleaning, do whatever needs to be done, and have a big um, district-wide day of service. So, Cleve, since I'm a change maker governor, that makes you a change maker president. So while you're doing good in this world, be sure to share your stories and all the wonderful work you do here in our district newsletter. So they said they took pictures when you gave out the scholarship, send that in, because the more we share with each other, the easier it is for us to do things. Uh, that's how lots of us get ideas on how to do things. My club is very small, and um, we haven't done any, we haven't done any fundraisers for the past two years because we won a fundraiser at the end of the year and it got knocked out from COVID. So we operated the whole next year, couldn't do any, didn't do any fundraisers, didn't have our big one knocked out. So we are working on a monopoly board for our area, but we got the idea and all the contacts from the Ipswich Club. So they had Ipswich Raleighopoly there, and we have the Parkwayopoly down here. And we're just about finished selling all the ad space around it, and that pays for everything. And as you sell the boards, that's where your club makes money. And so over three years, because... 
we do things in pieces. It'll take us three years to sell all the boards, but that means we'll have income coming in for three years. We wouldn't have even thought of it or known how to do it if we didn't see it in the district newsletter and know that the Ipswich Club had done this and that it was easy and we're not on top of them. They didn't mind sharing their information with us. So I encourage you to stick stuff into the district newsletter. Let's see, I already talked about the basic service and what's going on in our district. Um, I don't know if he said or not, but on August 19th, we are having a membership forum. And it is going to stay online, on Zoom. And um, <coughs> together with the Public Image Committee, we've worked up some new brochures that will be very easy for people to update their membership <coughs> brochures. And all you got to do is give us some information, and it will come back, and you'll be able to send it off to the printer. We also have a presentation from the Lynn Club. They're being very ambitious they, this year. They're looking to increase by 30 members. That's a big jump. So they have a whole plan yeah. worked out. And what it boils down to is, is being consistent. A lot of clubs have, over the past year, changed their times from breakfast to lunch to dinner to back. Um, my own club, club included. We've met on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. We've made at breakfast. We've made at, met at lunch. We met in people's backyards. We went back to our venue for evenings. They're not open at lunch. Now we're meeting at a ban bank and brown bagging it. So it's very difficult for anybody to find us if they really wanted to come and find us. And so part of Lynn's plan is to be putting out a calendar, to be having their breakfast meetings twice a month, their dinner me lunch meetings twice a month, standard service projects on certain weekends. And then they worked on an initiative of reaching out to the nonprofits in their area. And Lynn is a big area with a lot of nonprofits. So they're going to outline what they're doing and what their plan is. And I think it will be very informative for other people to learn from. <coughs> he told you that the boat trip is rescheduled to August 21st. This is from the 1920 year. We put a deposit down, so we have to go and have lobster. There's just no two ways about this. So I hope that anyone who's going to be around on that Saturday will go to the district website and register. If you got my newsletter, it should have come out yesterday. I sent an email to everyone. There are links right in them that you just can click on that will take you to registering for every, everything. Thanks to Alexander, because he does that great. Um, and as Cleve said, on November 11th, we're having another hero celebration. And um, we're just hoping that everybody comes, that every club puts up a hero, because there is a hero in every community, someone who's helped us all get through this last year and a half. As I told them, my past, one of my other past presidents in my club, his wife's a physician's assistant. And they have two small children. Well, they're not that small anymore. They're probably four and six or seven. And she worked the entire time coming back and forth. And then she stopped for a week to have a baby. And then she went right back to work. And in my estimation, she's a hero. And we don't, they don't, people don't get praise enough for doing. They just think that they're doing. And so we want to make sure that we praise all kinds of people and honor them. Along with the, the Paul Harris recognition on that evening, we'll also have a silent auction. So we asked each club to donate an item into the silent auction. And um, it's just going to be a great night of fellowship. We're looking to have fellowship this year. We're looking to have fun. I'm working on a couple of other fun events. I'm looking to see what's going on up at the North Shore Music Circus for, at Christmas time. And can they put aside 50 or 100 tickets for Rotarians to buy? And we can all go up there and meet and have a good time and watch them see a play or whatever's going on. And there's also something... Um, Arlington has a great little theater that has all kinds of interesting, funky stuff. I don't know anybody who's been down there, but I saw these two brothers, sisters, I don't know what, Mamma Mia, they were hysterical. And I can say this because I'm Italian, all talking and back and forth and, and making fun of everyone. And they had antipasto that they sent out into the audience, and it was a great night and just a fun evening. And so we're looking to throw a couple of fun evenings in. Not to raise money on anything, just to, for, to increase fellowship within the district. Um, you have an interact club, and so 
we have just finished putting together um, a mini grant for the Interact Clubs. It's a max of $100. If you can get your Interact Club to do a service project, we'll help support it. So whether they're planting flowers someplace, or whether they're going, I don't know, bringing something to a senior development, or they're working with kids, or they're providing, um, I don't know, Interact Kids think of all kinds of inventive ways. Starting September 1st, you'll be able to download that um, one-page application off the district website. And it gets put in by the Rotary Club to support their Interact Club. And, and we're hoping that the Interactors will join us to support World Polio Day. That's October 23rd, so if you can convince your Interact Club to and give them a couple bottles of purple nail polish and tell them to have a purple pinky day at school and paint the kids' nail polishes purple for donations, whether it's a quarter, whether it's 50 cents, whether it's a dollar, the amount doesn't matter. What matter is that they're learning to support polio and they're learning to look beyond themselves. At the district installation, um, after we were all installed, I asked if anybody noticed that we did not install a district secretary. And that's because the five or six people I asked just didn't have time to do it. So would anybody sitting there like to step up and be the district secretary or the assistant secretary because what it meant was you come to four extra meetings a year and you take the minutes. And if we happen to be online, as we were last year, everything is Zoomed, it's recorded. You can, don't even have to take the minutes, you just record it at your leisure. And so after the meeting, two people stepped up to be the secretary and the assistant secretary. And one person who had said no to me came back and said, you know, if you really need someone, I can do it. I said, well, I have two people to do it now, but now you're in my right pocket. Your name's there. I know you really have time. There's no getting away from me now, so thank you very much. So I want you all to know that our district committees can always use more members on it. They can always use people who are looking at things from a different perspective. And that's the membership committee, the public image, the DEI, and even all of the youth um, committees whether it's Interact, RILA, or Youth Exchange. All of them meet on Zoom, and so if anyone has an interest in serving or just sitting in on a meeting to see how they go and if it's something you might be interested, shoot myself an email, shoot Cleve an email, and he'll forward it up to me, shoot Tom an email, um, whomever, just because the, the more people that help us out, the easier our life becomes. The last thing I want to remind you about is there was no international convention this year in June, so Spencer didn't get to go to Taiwan with me. And the year before, there was no convention in Hawaii. We were all ready to go. So next year's convention is June 4th to 8th, and it's in Houston, Texas. So even if the rest of the world shuts down, we're all still going to Houston, Texas. And along with Alexander Ami Borovic, who is the president, the co-president of the Rockport Club, they're the co-chairs of the International Convention. Ami lives half the year in Houston, so he has been assigned the post of, find me a nice rodeo, please, for us to all go to. We like to go to a real Texas barbecue. And find some fun stuff for us to do, because the convention stuff happens during the daytime, and you're pretty left, much left to your own devices in the evening. Um, and so, I want you all to think about if your club puts aside money to send, you've been putting money aside for a couple of years, send all these past presidents with me, send Cleve down with me to enjoy, you know, um, all that Houston has to offer. So Cleve, since you are a change maker president, that makes all of you change maker Rotarians. During this special year of yours, I want you to remember what Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. I want you to have a fabulous year. Don't lose my email. Very easy, Terry Curran 7930 Gmail. And um, I wish you the best for the coming year. Thank you. Anybody have any questions that I can answer?
50-50 raffle. All right, the 50-50 raffle today is $4. And it is the pink ticket. The cake. Sure. Absolutely sure. <laughs> Nine zero six. That's me. Oh, 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 oh,